Hi, this is Maria Langer, and I'm doing my second video about the helicopter flight controls. Uh, in this one, I'll be covering the collective, and I'll show you some stuff on the ground, and then we're going to uh, fly, and I'll show you how it works when we're flying. Okay, uh, this is the Robinson R44 collective, and the collective has actually this lever here has two parts to it. Uh, the lever itself is the collective, it goes up and down. And on the end, there is a, th a twist grip throttle. Um, it's kind of like a motorcycle throttle, except it goes in the opposite direction. And that's just to screw up people who are motorcycle riders. Uh, not really, but that's how it is. And that's the way it is in all helicopters, not just Robinson's. Um, the collective has on it a friction. That's this lever here. And I can reduce the friction before I start moving it. And then the collective goes up and down. And as it goes up and down, the pitch of all the rotor blades, in this case just two rotor blades, changes the same amount. So I'm going to pull it up and down and you can see the effect on the main rotor blades. So here I'm going to grab it. I usually grab it right here, try not to hide it too much. And I go up and that's all the way up and down. I'll do that one more time. Up, all the way and down. Make a nice squeaky noise there. And it's a habit of mine to just put, twist the throttle back. Uh, and then I'm going to put the collect, uh, friction back on. Now some folks uh, suggested using the collective friction to hold the collective in place in flight. And that is not necessary on a Robinson uh, R44. Um, a lot of people have criticized me for releasing the collective in flight. Um, and that is... Um, something that I, I admit that I do. However, I normally keep my hand on the seat right next to it, or if there's somebody sitting in that seat, then it'll be on my lap, uh, literally inches from the collective. Um, in an R22, you have, they say, two seconds to get that collective full down in the event of an uh, engine failure. Um, Two seconds is, it seems like a real short time, but when your hand is either on the collective or it's right next to the collective, it's not a very short time at all. And this is also Robinson R44, and it uh, gives you a little bit more wiggle room for that. I am not concerned with my reaction to getting my hand on the collective and full down in the event of an engine failure. And by the way, the reason that we do a collective full down in engine failure is to reduce the pitch on the blades, which reduces the drag on the blades, which allows the blades to keep spinning uh, while you are uh, doing your auto rotation. When the blades stop spinning or if they slow down beyond a certain point, um, you have a serious problem in a helicopter that you're not going to recover from. So um, in an auto rotation, do full down on the collective. Um, and that um, reduces the pitch on the blades, which reduces the drag on the blades, uh, which allows the blades to keep spinning as long as you do everything else right. Um, and that is the collective. And I've got fr my fr friction full on. I do not use the friction in flight. Okay, so I am flying now, and I'd like to demonstrate how the collective works. So the collective is this up and down um, bar next to the seat. Uh, it's held in my uh, left hand. I get a lot of questions about why I don't let, hold on to it the whole time, and the reason is that on a Robinson, it pretty much stays where you put it. Uh, so I've adjusted it to this setting, which is about 20 inches of manifold pressure. That's this here, and uh, that's the power setting that I want right now, and the blades are pitched for that, and um, I don't have to hold on to it. Um, however, when I want to change it, of course, I do have to grab hold of it, and, uh, and my hand is always close. Uh, if you need to get into an auto rotation, uh, the first thing is that that has to go down. So what I'm going to do to demonstrate this is I'm watching an airliner, the uh, runway there, and it's going to be taken off soon. So I'm going to land back where I started from. One Anchi traffic, 6253 Alpha, turning crosswind, Alpha 12, One Anchi. Okay, so someone just took off, he's on the other end. And One Anchi traffic, helicopter 34 Delta is crossing the approach end of runway 12. I'm going to be landing down by the fire cache. Okay, so now I am um, ready, starting to descend. So I've been pushing the collective down a little bit. And I'm going to continue to push it down. And what I'm doing to land is I'm uh, pushing the collective down. And this is basically telling the helicopter to reduce the pitch on the blades, which is reducing my lift, which is letting me come down. 
but at the same time I'm pulling the stick back, the cyclic stick back, and that's slowing me down, and it's also causing me to, to kind of rise a little bit. So it's a it basically a little bit of a dance between the cyclic and the collective to descend and to also um, to also slow down. This airline is going to take off right next to us, I think. I hope I'm not freaking him out. They've got TCAS on there, so. Anyway, I'm, I'm still pulling it down, pulling it down now, and eventually, I don't want to go all the way down to the ground, I want to come into a hover, so i got to start pulling that power back in. So I'm pulling up a little bit on the collective, still slowing down. I'm just going to land over here on the side since he's gone already. And I'm not quite, I'm, I'm going through what's called ETL, that's what the vibrations are all about. It's slowing down to a certain speed. And I want to land here. This was a really sloppy landing for you. So I should have come down right to the spot. But I wasn't quite sure where I was going to land. So right now I'm in a hover. If you look at the manifold pressure gauge, I cannot let go of the cyclic right, the collective right now. Uh, it's the one that's kind of next to my phone. It looks like I'm pulling 18 inches of manifold pressure. That's my hover power. So to land, to get down to the ground, I'm going to lower the collective slowly. Until I'm on the ground, and then I put it all the way down. So that's the collective uh, to land, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off, I'm going to do a pattern, and then I'm going to land again. So I'm going to narrate the whole thing, and um, we'll see if I can uh, get that across to you. And again, this camera here that's pointing at me, hopefully it's showing you this, and uh, it's making me look like I'm 400 pounds, I'm not. Um, uh, but it will hopefully show you what's going on a little bit. So, I'm on the ground, sort of dead on the ground. I've got 12, this is the manifold pressure gauge. I don't know if you can see it or not, but if you can, um, it's showing right now 12 inches. So, 12 inches is my idle power right now. Three off, but turning base, one, two, one, Anchi. Hey, one, Anchi traffic helicopter, three, four deltas uh, landed on the ramp. I'm gonna be taking off doing left traffic off the uh, taxiway parallel to one, two. He's going to be doing uh, right traffic on the runway, so we should be no factor. Okay, so to take off, I'm going to slowly lift up the collective until I'm light on the skids. I feel a little bit light now, a little bit light, lighter, lighter. It's coming up, power's coming up, little right, left pedal, and then up into the air. Right around 18, 18 inches, that's my hover power. And I should be able to take off at hover power, but I've got plenty of power, so I'm going to bring it up to 20 inches about and push the cyclic a little bit forward. Go through to ETL, it gets really, really uh, more effective. The textbook takeoff is to pitch for 45 and then pitch for 60. And yes, I know the carbon monoxide detector light just went on again. And I'm at 60 and then you climb out to your, your uh, altitude. And the whole time I have not changed the collective. It's still 20 inches of manifold pressure. And the air will clear out again. It's got to do with the wind blowing when I'm sitting on the ground. It blows the um, exhaust into the cockpit. It's very, very annoying. But the light will go out. Okay, so I'm going to turn and do a little traffic pattern. I'll keep climbing. Traffic hill up to three, four deltas. Uh, just turn downwind left traffic taxiway parallel to one, two. The rules about helicopters and airplanes is we're supposed to avoid the fix, flow of fixed wing traffic, and the best way to do that is to do a traffic, if we're going, doing a traffic pattern, do it opposite of the airplanes. So he's on the runway now taking off, it's on upwind. So I'm just cruising along around 19 inches, 18, 19 inches of manifold pressure. Now if I wanted to slow down right now without changing my altitude, I could re reduce the collective and pull back on the cyclic. And that lets me reduce my speed without climbing. And if I want to do the opposite, get some more speed without um, uh, without descending, I have to pull pitch, in other words, pull up the collective and 
uh, pitch the helicopter forward with the sight leg. And that's how that works. And I'm going to turn now to make my um, uh, to make my landing. So I'm slowing down, and I'm going to start descending, and I'm making my turn. I'm doing that with the cyclic. I'm reducing my power. I'm down to 15 inches of manifold pressure. One Anchi traffic six two five zero Alpha turning crosswind one two one Anchi. And one Anchi traffic helicopter three four Delta has just turned final taxiway parallel one two. Okay, so now I'm down to let's see 15 inches of manifold pressure. I'm descending. I'm gonna land. Um, I'll land a beam. Uh, let's see. I'll land a beam the the windsock down there. So I'll try to do a nice landing dr direct to that. So again, I'm just coming down. I've got a descent rate going of about 500 feet per minute, 15 inches of manifold pressure. Reducing the collective a little more, a little more. Pull back on the cyclic to slow down. More, more, more on the collective. I'm down to nine inches of manifold pressure. Okay, now I'm, I'm starting to settle. I want to level out, so I'm starting to pull the collective back up. Because remember, it takes more power to hover than to fly. So I'm bringing it all back in. And I'm just going to bring it right to here. And that's it. So I'm in a hover now back up to 19 inches, 18, 19 inches. If I wanted to land, I just set it down by um, reducing the collective. Eh, a little bouncy, but okay, that's it. So that's the collective. And the only other thing I want to mention is that the um, throttle grip is at the end of the collective, and I'm going to cover that in a different video. But what I want to point out here is I told you in this whole video about using the collective, also a little bit about using the cyclic, and uh, I cover the cyclic in a different video as well. Um, I didn't mention too much about the pedals, but the whole time that I'm adjusting these, I'm also working the pedals. Um, I'm not working them a lot, but I'm working them a little. And uh, all the stuff is kind of automatic to me at this point, so it's really hard for me to narrate it all, but I'm, I'm trying. I'm working on it, Jason. I, I swear I'm working on it. Well, that's all I shot for this video. Um, unfortunately, I did forget to mention a couple of things, so I hope you will check the description for this video to uh, pick up on a few things I seem to have omitted. And uh, also, if you like videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, consider becoming a member. And uh, if you want to see where I'm going right now, uh, check in and watch the video of Autumn Colors up on uh, Rock Island Creek. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Bye.